Oh, um, the blue bags behind me, <laughs> those are called Ambu bags. And um, I'll just bring one over. Um, these are used for mechanical ventilation. So, you know, ventilation is a hot topic these days. Everybody's talking about the ventilator shortage. Um, but I feel like there are really not a lot of people who actually know what that means. Um, and a ventilator is used to breathe for a patient when they can't breathe for themselves, really. So um, we use these in situations where patients are literally about to die from respiratory failure. Um, by the time you're bringing out mechanical ventilation, this, this is mechanical ventilation, but it's, it's hand operated. So when we're doing mechanical ventilation this way, you have to have somebody squeezing the bag. Um, there are machines that do it. They're very sophisticated, extremely expensive. Um, and to be honest, uh, mechanical ventilation requires a dedicated team, a very sophisticated facility, a lot of financial resources. And if you're in a situation where you need mechanical ventilation, you're in a life or death situation already. So the best thing is to avoid getting on the ventilator if you can. Um, by being proactive, by preventing cases that need ventilation as much as possible because it really is a last resort. So these are used for mechanical ventilation um, to breathe for patients when they can't get enough oxygen by themselves. Um, most often we use them in CPR situations where patients are actually already dead and we're breathing for them. Um, but there are a lot of situations where patients are on death's door and they can't get enough oxygen for many different reasons. Um, and we will, we will start mechanical ventilation. Um, the Ambu bags are temporary until they can get to a larger hospital where they have the actual ventilator machines. In the veterinary profession, to have access to a mechanical ventilator, you really do have to have access to a specialty hospital. That's where the emergency and critical care specialists work, and they're truly amazing, but uh, the, the resources that are involved in providing that type of a service are uh, astronomical. They can be you know, in a human hospital, $10,000 a day. And the chances of surviving, as you know, it's already <clears throat> a life or death situation. If you're dealing with lung failure or pneumonia, um, you know, you might never get somebody off a ventilator. So, you know, that said, um, there are situations where, you know, patients get off ventilators. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking about the SPCA today and some of my early lessons as a veterinarian um, when I was working in Taos, New Mexico, where they have a really bad problem with pet overpopulation. Their animal shelter is just completely understaffed and they, they, they had a kill shelter, so they just didn't have the ability to adopt all of those pets out. Um, and when I was 25 years old, just fresh out of school, um, the clinic I worked at, my boss was actually the one in town that was in charge of doing the, the shelter euthanasias. And uh, shout out to Ted Shubak. <laughs> He's awesome. But, uh, you know, I think, I, luckily I was never exposed to it. I think he knew I was way too sensitive for that kind of thing. But uh, it's a hard job. Um, he had to do the shelter euthanasias and he'd go there like every week or every two weeks. And, you know, everybody that was on death row, he'd put them to sleep. Um, Sometimes he would come back with dogs that he just couldn't do it. Um, but one day I came into work one morning and he was like, must have been 60 years old already at that point. And, uh, you know, he'd been up all night and I just, I was like, what's going on? He's like, oh, it was my worst nightmare. He went to the animal shelter um, to do the euthanasias of all the dogs that couldn't be adopted out. Um, and Right as he administered the euthanasia solution, someone came running in and said, not that one. And so he immediately intubated the dog and started ventilating it. Um, and he ventilated it all night until the morning when he was able to, to extubate the, the patient and it was able to breathe again. Um, that dog's name was Cinder in the shelter. And he changed her name to Phoenix because he said, 
that she rose from the ashes. So, you know, there are situations where mechanical ventilation truly does save lives, but there are other situations where, you know, it's, it's really a last resort and the chances of survival are very, very low um, relative to the amount of resources that are poured into it. So that's what these are for. Hope you never have to find out what this is. Um, these are, yeah, these are, you know, if somebody's pulling out the blue bag, uh, it's a pretty scary time. It's a sad day for somebody. Hard decisions and, you know, very stressful. So that's what the blue bags are for. Just a little conversation on mechanical ventilation that does kind of tie into our topic on coronaviruses.